I'm here today to present uh, my work on the formative evaluation I completed on a pilot school food program called Setting the Table. All right, first, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm presenting today from the city of Toronto, which is the traditional territory of many nations. Uh, that includes the Mississauga of the Credit, the Nashabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. So in 2022, the provincial government of BC allocated funds to improve food security for students living within School District 62, located in Victoria, British Columbia. Community partners in the region championed to create Setting the Table, which is a school food program. It began food services in the winter semester of 2023. The program aims to, to provide 200 meals every school day between January and June of 2023. These meals are being divided between six schools within this district, in addition to morning and afternoon snacks. Hot food is prepared largely off-site and delivered to each school at set times. Each, each school is responsible for providing staff or volunteer capacity to facilitate the serving of food and snacks, as well as um, cleanup efforts. Five schools are receiving buffet-style lunches, while two schools are receiving breakfast only or in addition to lunch. Selection of students participating in the program is also being done by the school. While some, um, while some schools have chosen to select students based on need, most have opted for a more inclusive approach by rotating through classes or eating blocks. Research has shown that school food programs in Canada can have positive health impacts on ch children that last into adulthood, and yet Canada remains the only G8 country without a nationwide school food program. We also know that with growing inflation, food insecurity in Canada has been on the rise, and households with school-aged children are among the most vulnerable. So for my methods, um, those involved with the development and facilitation of setting the table were invited to participate in a semi-structured interview that was used to glean information about the participants' role in the program and their interpretation of its strengths and potential shortcomings. These interviews were conducted one-on-one -on -one with each participant via Zoom, and the audio has been transcribed and thematically analyzed. Um, I will note here that full thematic analysis is still underway and that this evaluation focuses on two preliminary emerging themes. Participants included folks internal to the school system, such as teachers and principals, as well as those external to the school system, such as chefs and volunteers. Our evaluation sought to answer questions such as, what has supported and what has hindered the efficient distribution of nourishing food to students? And what are the perceived attitudes of those involved with the program pertaining to its necessity, feasibility, and execution? I will now speak to the two key preliminary findings. Um, first had to do with issues of um, human capacity and volunteerism. Setting the table, like many community projects, aims to develop solutions created for and by community members. However, the unpaid labor of many folks within the program presents numerous issues. In the wake of neoliberal politics, there has been diminished responsibility and accountability on the part of Canada's federal and provincial governments in assisting issues such as food security in general and participating in solutions such as school food programs specifically. This means that setting the table, like many similar initiatives, relies heavily on volunteer labor and the increased labor of people working outside their formal roles. Our results show a clear issue with this phenomena, phenomenon that has been growing in the public health field. While community engagement programs have many benefits, most of them are running on bare bones staff and sagging support from the government. The second finding has to do with issues of, around space and accessibility. As previously mentioned, Canada has no national food program, so schools and school systems are not designed with food provision in mind. This was identified as an issue among participants with comments about the lack of utilities available at their schools to store, heat, and serve the food provided by setting the table. In addition, many schools have limited physical space for a school food program, and the design only works well within some of the school's set schedules. For example, as breakfast programs are not traditionally built into Canadian school timetables, schools being provided with breakfast are struggling to find the time for their students to eat it. Similarly, there are issues with the brevity of lunch, particularly at the high schools. One participant explained that students at their schools are given a mere 15 minutes to eat lunch and that the staff worry about how this may impact the program's desired nutritional benefits. Ultimately, the issue of human capacity and volunteerism can likely only be solved through increased funding and structural changes, both within the school system and external from it. That would allow for the creation of more paid roles within setting the table and similar programs. Furthermore, there is a need for greater recognition of the already heavy load placed on teachers and other staff within the Canadian school system. From the results section, it is clear that setting the table for all its benefits has furthered this strain. Increased collaboration between setting the table and the school system staff may assist in creating solutions to mitigate this challenge. 
Hiring staff to facilitate the school food program would ensure that the work is not being added to existing roles. If these roles cannot be created due to funding constraints or other reasons, it may be difficult to combat the challenges discussed related to human capacity and volunteerism. Issues of accessibility and space are even more challenging, as they do not have to do with setting the table. They exist to varying degrees within schools and school systems in Canada. As Canada works towards improving food security among school-aged children, there will have to be more consideration given to how to adjust school curriculum, schedule, and job roles to accommodate improvements. Improvements to the physical structure and facilities of schools are necessary to provide proper eating spaces and time for students and increase the ability and desire of schools to properly prepare and serve food. So the Setting the Table pilot project aims to increase food security through the development of a school food program that provides hot meals and snacks to several schools within School District 62. While the program has had many successes, systemic issues within the school system and limited human capacity have created challenges that will likely only grow if the program continues and expands. Further funding would be best be utilized by hiring more professionals to take pressure off the volunteer pool the program currently relies heavily on. Structural issues within the school system are more difficult to suggest solutions for. These issues grow out of larger ones that are embedded within the fabric of the school system itself. School, pro school food programs in Canada cannot run as passion projects. There is a demonstrated need for funding to support employed roles from program development to facilitation. As well, for programs like Setting the Table and others, there's likely a need to revise what schools look like in terms of physical space and facilities for eating, and where such programs fall on the priority list of the school's curriculum and schedules. Those involved in the further development of Setting the Table must champion for collaboration at the school district, community, provincial, and federal levels to continue making changes that will grow success. To end off, I would just like to say thank you to my practicum supervisors, uh, Matthew Kemshaw and Dr. Matthew Little. I am so appreciative of your guidance and patience <laughs> as I've uh, undertaken this project and I'm continuing um, my work with them, which I'm very excited about. And I'd like to also say thank you to uh, Jeff Masuda and everybody at UVic. It's been, um, it's, been a, it's been a journey. So thank you.